Do you water your seed? No. No? Because it rains. Now, when it gets dry, like, see, I plant all summer long, I'll water. But I water just enough to get it up. Once it's up, I stop watering. Because, you see, in the summertime, I have no weeds. Mm. So I'm not, I'm not watering. Because, see, it's been raining, I have weeds. Mm, yeah. And so, having no weeds in the summer is just fun. And the other advantage is when you water in the summer, you splash yeah. dirt on your leaves. We're going to walk over here now and have some lettuce and spinach that's totally clean. But before we do, let's walk in the garden because I want you to see how cool the soil is. Just walk through here to go, go into the garden. See, no one invites you to walk in their garden. <laughs> because you're going to compact it. But you want this. this can't it. Yeah, it can't be compacted. Yeah, yeah walk, go on. We're finding the same thing at our place now. Yeah. Isn't it fun? It we're is. Our, we're in our second year. So. Aren't you loving it? Yeah. We are and you're going to find it. it just gets easier and easier and easier. It's just like, yay God. Our three-year-old did most of the planting. She adores it. It's so <laughs> fun. Like, this is great, Mom. The kids get it. Kids get it. They get it. That's why Jesus says, except you become like a little child, you will enter the kingdom of heaven. Because they get it. There's a well right there, yeah. It's 130 feet. And it puts out 20 gallons a minute. It's an amazing well. No. That hand pump there is there so when the power goes out, I have water. Did you, uh... Now I want you to guy to walk on this on this soil. All all you men that till, come here. All you tillers, come here. That's it. Move, move it with your hand. Now I want you, I want you to with your feet. Pound, pound on that. Try to compact it. Get with it. Now after you're all done, go down with your hand and watch how nice it moves. Are you getting it? This is, and this is, this is all compost created by, by, by my chickens from my yard waste. Yep. See, all these weeds, I feed them my chickens who produce awesome eggs, who are totally healthy, and they turn it back to this beautiful soil for me. And when you get down to my chicken pen, you're going to find that I'm overwhelmed with abundance. My fences are getting really short because the ground is getting really high. My garden doesn't need it anymore, but I've got to get it out of there because I have too much. You see, at all levels, I'm being challenged with abundance. It's just huge. I want to come over here. Um, I want to address something here for everybody on the uh, YouTube because I'm getting a lot of responses from people that people are using insecticides. Are you hearing me? People are using insecticides in their organic gardens. And they're using what they think is organic insecticides. So I want you all to come up here. Does anybody here um, eat arugula? Does anybody know what arugula tastes like? Mine was so bitter, I threw it and we're throwing it out. Because any, anybody who has arugula, go over there and pick a big leaf and, I, and talk to me about it. Uh, when did you plant these April. But I want to show you something here that I got this year about insecticides. Be, be descriptive about that arugula. How is it compared to what you've had in the past? Not quite as bitter. Is it bitter at all? It's not bitter. No. It's not bitter. No. Are you hearing this? It tastes a little nutty. A little nutty. Mm -hmm. is, it, is there anything not good about that? Oh my gosh. No, it's is there anything you've had before that's as good as that? Mm -hmm. Be honest. I'm, 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 oh, I'm, I guess I don't like arugula because that's exactly the way mine at home tastes and we're getting ready to pull it all out because we don't like the taste. Did you have this? I just did, yeah. What do you think? Now, I want you all to step back. I want to show you why you don't use insecticides. You see this row of arugula? You see out here? Don't, there's some in here you're stepping on. But there's not much here. What happened, and I asked the creator about this because this is so powerful about these insecticides. When I planted this in April, and while we're here, that spinach behind you is really delicious. You can just sample and munch on it because it's really good because I want you to experience good food. But I planted this in April first when it was very cold and wet. And it took a long time to come up. And because it took a long time to come up, the plant did not have a lot of water content in its foliage because it had no roots yet. And the insects took it all out. Oh, wow. Wow. I'm going to pull this up in a few weeks when it bolts, and I'll plant again in the next planting because it's warm. will all come up full of water, and there will be one bit of insect damage. And so I got in the spirit 
why the insects took my plants out. See, insects will not eat my, my plants because they're full of water and they drowned. Insects want dehydrated stress plants so they can get cellulose and fiber, which are not in my plants because there's too much water content. You see that spinach? You see how much water is in it? So see how so good? Juicy, it? Yeah. So juicy. And you see bugs want cells and fiber. They bite at my plants, so they drown. But because these little plants did not have a root system yet and weren't growing quick enough, the bugs took them out because they weren't full of water. I'm just saying, see, these are revelations that I had never known before. But see, as I, as I, and see this is why I'm telling you, don't use insecticides. Insecticides, everybody hear me, are toxic. They're killing insects. And when it goes into your soil, they're going to kill all the life forms in your soil as well. And then when you eat the produce that comes from that, you're getting this death-producing element. And so at no level is insecticides permissible. If you're anal and you can't stand losing some, you can go and get garlic or, or cayenne pepper or any good hot pepper, put it in solution and spray in your plants and all the insects leave. You're not going to hurt anything. It's not toxic. It's not damaging, but insects are gringos. They can't handle heat, and they're out of there. Cayenne, cayenne garlic is the best. Oh, cayenne, cayenne, all the hot peppers or, or garlic is the best. So grind, grind it up and put it in water and spray. Oh. You'll see everything leaves. Because oh. garlic is an insecticide. Oh. It's powerful. Oh. Mm -hmm. If you look at garlic plants growing, there's not one bug bite in any leaf anywhere, oh. ever. Because it's an insecticide. Oh. They don't touch it. What about fertilizers? What is your take on fertilizers? Fertilizers, again, I go to nature. In nature, no fertilizer happens. And the reason people are fertilizing when they tilled is that before they tilled, they had vital, healthy, living soil. After they tilled, it died, and there's no life, and they got to put fertilizer to restore life. It's huge. So your chicken, I was you can use chicken and, manure and, and natural manures. And you got to be careful about manures. I'm so glad you said that. From the beginning of time, manures were a wonderful resource for the ground. But today in the world we live in, animals are fed genetically modified organisms. They're given growth hormones. They're given antibiotics, which are toxic to the ground. And they eat on pastures that are spread with 2,4-D to take out the broadleaf. And they will kill all your, all that manure will kill your garden. So you got to know where it's coming from today. This is why I love wood chips. Wood chips are clean. They haven't been messed with and they're safe. Nowadays, you have to be really careful what you're putting back because it may not be safe. There was an article in, in um, Mother Earth News that was so scary, this, this, this family who'd been growing a garden for decades in this spot had got all this cow manure and they tilled it in. Nothing grew. And they found out the farmer had used 2,4-D, Agent Orange, to, to spray on his fields to get rid of the broadleaf weeds. And the animals ate that in the manure and it totally destroyed their garden, wiped it out. So I'm just saying we have to, we have, to have wisdom we're living in a time where the Bible says they're going to say what's wrong is right, what's right is wrong, we're there. And we have to really seek God for wisdom and what you can and cannot use in your garden because not everything is safe anymore. Yes? Paul, I got, I got carrots that, that, are not, that were not rooting. They were not rooting and it said that it was because uh, uh, it wasn't potash but uh, potassium or it was missing the other P, whatever the other P is. So not put wood chips down. Huh? Put wood chips down, that'll change. Let me let me let me all share with you something it's powerful. Really growing in wood chips that have kind of broken down. It's going to get better. Here's here's the thing: is you guys all got to hear me. When you start out, you're coming to an environment for, for who knows how long has been depleted. Yeah. You're not going to change it overnight. Yep. It takes time to upgrade. But let me tell you about the power of wood chips. There's a there's a there's a company in Montana who t tests soils for farmers all over the United States. A large company, does soil tests. When they saw the film, they were curious about my soil conditions. So they sent some guy from Seattle to take a soil sample that sent to them. When you get a soil test back, you get two lines. One is the desired level, second line is lab results. The desired level of nitrogen in the soil is 40. My lab results is 120. Desired level of phosphorus is 167. Mine was 1154. Potassium, desired level is like, one of, mine was 1200. Coming down to smaller, zinc, 1 to 6, mine was 20.5. And what, the reason my food tastes so good is because of the high mineral content. Get it. The flavor of the food indicates its nutritional value. And because they're eating in this environment with unlimited resource, they taste like it. They taste like I had plenty to eat and it was good. 
Conversely, when things not growing, it's saying, there's nothing here. Well, I'm starving. Did you comment yet on the type of wood chips species? Yeah, they're all good. They're all good, all of them, even cedar. Even cedar. Well, look, look at my woods behind you. Yeah. Everybody turn around. See all the cedar trees out there? You can see there's a lot of cedars in there. You can see that all the firs next to them, the tall ones, are bright green. Now in the fall, after a hot summer, the cedars flag, meaning the interior needles turn yellow more than any other. And the first wind that's all on the ground, no one's taking it away and everything's green. But the wood, the, the chipped wood, if, if you get that... We're talking about chipped branches, which is 90% needles and leaves. The wood's minimal. It's not a problem. And here's what I'm getting in the spirit. Is a tannic acid in the cedar, there's tannic acid in it. We know that. It's not good for us or the plants. But as it goes through the composting process, by the time that cedar gets to the roots, that tannic acid is no longer there. Nature's broken it down and changed it. And I get in the spirit, the creator who made all this didn't miss anything. It's not like he thought, uh-oh, what about... No, he knew it all. And he designed this system of composting to make everything right. It's huge. It's totally awesome. I love it. Because I'm working with one who comes from a position of all wisdom, all knowledge. You don't get higher than that. There's nothing higher. And I just love it because it's perfect and it can't be improved on. And it's just so fun to connect and enjoy the benefits of all with small knowledge because it works really well. <laughs> it's so fun and so simple. I love it. So if you can't have chickens... Then you, what you, you, take, you, take what you, you take your material. Here's, here's the insanity of, of um, composting bins. I keep using that word insanity because to do the same thing over and over, thinking you get different results, is insanity. That's what we do. Composting bins cost money. They're expensive, big metal bins. And you put your compost in it, and you're labor intensively turning it. And if you look at the grass below it, it's the greenest in your whole place because all the compost tea is running out, being wasted on the ground below. <laughs> I'm being real. I'm being real. So take your material, put it where you want it. If you don't like looking at it, Put wood chips over it, bury it, and let it compost in your garden, around your trees where it's going to end up. Why move it? Why turn it? Why mess with it? It knows how to compost. It doesn't need help. I'm just telling you, it's so insane, the stuff we do, because it's completely unnecessary, and it's a lot of work, and of no benefit. <laughs> There it is. You got it. It's all about greed. See, all these systems that we're being told about are connected to something you have to buy that you become a slave to. Where everything about God, and I love that, it was for liberty Christ came to set us free. Everything about God is free and sets free. Everything. Everything. And with stuff costing money, i got to question it. That's not God. That's not His intent. Really. It's, I love these spiritual principles are so significant because they're huge and they affect and relate to everything because God made it, made it that simple. He, he made it easy for us.